been a while since uh, I've done a video about business of writing. And today, when it comes to writing a book, one of the most common questions authors ask is, how long should the book be? Well, there's no one size fits all answer, I assure you. And the truth is, there's more wiggle room than you think. I So I figured today uh, would be a good chance to talk about industry standards for book lengths how they can vary by genre, and why you don't have to feel locked into a specific word count. So today we are going to go from, that's my writing process. What's going on here? Uh, so today we are going to go about book lengths and how much wiggle room you really have, which is ultimately going to be some fun stuff. I think I think we're going to have a lot of fun today. Also, I have a, uh, a, a sheet in the free folder. Um, that has all the numbers that we're going to go over plus more. And I'll just continue to add to that, uh, and update it over time. Uh, you know, basically that's what I do. You know what I'm saying? All right. But Thomas, why is it important? Well, that's a great question. Book length. Uh, <laughs> It's not about, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's how well the book reads. Am I, uh, anyway, um, Book length is important, not just because of the story you want to tell, but because of the business side of writing. That's really, let's be honest, the only thing that's important about book length is do you want to be published? Do you want to write in standards of the industry and genres? That's when you need to care about book lengths. Uh, but other than that, uh, it's really... If you're going to self-publish and uh, you're not paying for the cost of the uh, print, you might have a little bit more uh, wiggle room. However, there is wiggle room within the industry as well, and that's what we're going to discuss today. Um, but ultimately, uh, you know, if if you want to go traditional route or you really you want to write to a market or etc. or a genre, you know, publishers and agents use general word count guidelines as a way to gauge the marketability of your book and the costs. Uh, but before you stress out about hitting a perfect number, like you don't, just because it's a hundred thousand words, you don't have to write a hundred thousand words, right? So uh, we're going to break down why these, uh, these guidelines exist and how much flexibility you really have. Okay. First off, uh, print costs. That's right print costs all right oh we don't need this anymore Boop. all right print costs print costs uh well what happens here is uh wait 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 do, 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 do. print costs let me put this on the screen so you have it Boop. okay so print costs are uh, uh very important um so the longer a book is, the more it's going to cost to produce. That means publishers often have word count ranges to keep production costs in check. Uh, you know, ultimately what, what's happening is there. If All right. If you've ever uh, published through Amazon, here's a really quick, easy example. Amazon charges you X amount of dollars per book. I know you don't have to pay for that, but it comes out of the price of the book. So if they say for your book size, it's going to be $4, that means you won't make any money until you make it $4 and one penny. And now you can make a penny, but you could also make it $8. And now you make uh, 100% profit. Uh, however, you're making $4 over the original cost. So both Amazon and you are now making $4. All right. Um. So that's important to think about because if you go traditionally published, the same thing is going to happen. The publisher has to pay for the book to be printed, among other things. And whatever they have to pay, the cost has to justify the potential sales of your book. And there's a chance, being an unknown author, you might not generate a standard sales return. The author, the publishers know by reading a book, um, the pollen is not hit over here. Uh, not the pollen. But look at me. At cat dander. Cat dander. I'm allergic to pollen and cat dander. Actually. Um, the uh, the publisher knows. They'll they'll look at a book. They'll read a book, and they'll be like, "Hey, 
we we've been in this business enough. We know that you're most likely going to sell X amount of uh, copies for your first run. And they'll only do a run print. They'll do a, a first run print. And based on if that sells or doesn't sell, they might do a second run. They might do a second book, whatever the case may be. So if in their mind, they're like, we have to charge this much money because that's the standard of charge. You know, you can't charge $70 for a book that is traditionally, I don't know, 20 bucks. Like you just can't, especially if you're not a named author and it's not a specialty book. It doesn't have signature. It doesn't have whatever the case may be, right? So print cost comes down to, well, if the book is uh, within X amount of word count, we know that we can charge X amount of dollars. And we know that based on uh, history of sales, uh, y we can afford to pick this book up because it is both exciting to read. Uh, it has a uh, quality to it that is um, acceptable. And uh, we know we can make our money back, which brings us to the next point, marketing and sales expectations, right? So the marketing aspect of is readers tend to expect a certain length for specific, specific genres. For example, high fantasy novels might be 100,000 plus words, while romance novels are typically shorter. But additionally, again, the sales expectation of that is that, look, people... No one wants to pick up a romance novel that's 250,000 words. They just don't. Imagine Brandon Sanderson writing a romance novel. It's like eight books and uh, 16,000, 1,600 uh, uh, pages. <laughs> so those are things you have to think about. Um, and real quick, just off the top of the head, you know, a fantasy might be 90 to 120,000 words. Romance might be between 70 and 90,000 words, whereas a thriller might be 80 to 100,000 words, right? But the good news is these are really just guidelines, not hard rules. There's always wiggle room, and that's where the creative freedom comes in, is based on your marketability, your, uh, your reach. What is your established audience? Like, if you have... I'm making an insane number just to make it a point. If you have a million followers, all right? Let's say you have Dane Cook numbers, right? Dane Cook was the first person to have a million people on MySpace. I know I'm old. Fr from there, so <laughs> Tina Tequila was the second. Um, Dane Cook had a million people on his MySpace. He was getting hired to do comedy at colleges because he built those million people by going to colleges and frat parties and all these other things and establishing a relationship with that. So of course he got an agent and a manager. And of course bookers were like, yes, let's get you into these colleges. Let's get you into these shows because he had a million fans already. He had a million followers. That means 10% of those million is a hundred thousand people. Okay. That means if he does something, that 10% says that 100,000 people will be aware that he is doing it and they want to be aware of it because they are following him. Out of those 100,000 people, 10% are actually interested in it. So that means 10,000 people, without a doubt, are going to be paying attention. Now, at minimum... 10% of that 10,000 people are going to buy what he's selling, which means 1,000 people. What's 1,000 times four? Four grand, right? So that means every market, okay, is going to have a minimum of a potential 1,000 sales. So can he book a club? Yeah, if a club has 400 people in it, there's a high probability he's going to sell it out. If he goes to a college and that college is his primary fan base, there's a high possibility he's going to sell it out. It's the same thing with authors. If you have a following or audience and you're going, you have a, a high probability of return where you can at minimum sell a thousand books let's say a week just because your audience is so big and your audience is actually interacting with you publishers are going to go yeah all right let's put some money into this <laughs> because they know they're going to make their money back 
So when you have that kind of control because your audience wants, that's the thing. Like having a book does not necessarily build an audience, but if you have an audience, it creates the supply. It creates the demand that you need to supply. Growing up in the entertainment industry, one of the things I learned very early on is like I started in music and uh, well, I, I technically started as a comic book illustrator, but my big career really was music, right? That was where I first had 10 years in the industry and I was doing a lot of stuff. I was torn, etc. cetera. Um, in that situation, I had a, a president of a record label basically became one of my mentors. And he told me, he goes, uh, albums and shows don't build audiences. And the reason is because you don't have an audience yet for them to come to the shows and or buy the <laughs> buy the CD. Well, if I have the CD, people will listen to it. But why would they listen to it? They don't know who you are. You are a stranger. You have to build a relationship with them. They have to trust you. And this is this is where, like, you hear those stories with George R. R. Martin or Stephen King, uh, where... Uh, they're they're a little, they're much older than Brandon Sanderson, but they started in a world where they would get like a very small piece of writing in a magazine, you know, and it took thousands of rejection letters until they created a story where magazines like sure, and they started building a reputation within that industry through these small snippets, and they started building their audience not because they wrote a book but because they were known for a very specific thing. So Stephen King would submit to horror magazines, right? So he was building his horror fan base. But the only reason the audience read that article is because they were already fans of that magazine, right? R.R. Um, Martin wrote television. So uh, he wrote for Beauty and the Beast with uh, Ron Perlman and uh, Lin Linda Hamilton. And he built a reputation for being a, a writer within that sci-fi and fantasy world. So he was already a, a, a sci-fi writer, but, you know, he was doing other stuff. It wasn't until he really established that brand. Game of Thrones helped because he already had a fan base. And then the fan base, what happens with fan base? This is the secret, right? This, so this is one of the things I was taught. They go, look. If you give a CD to somebody that wants it, not only are they going to listen to it, okay, but they're going to have an emotional connection to it because they want it. You're not giving it to them. You're not hoping they like it. They like you. So they want it, right? And those few in the beginning, you give away your stuff for free because they want it. They want to support you, okay? So you give it to them and you go, here, take my CD or take my book or take my whatever, right? Then they're going to be like, oh, my God, one of my favorite writers or musicians or whatever gave me a free blank, blank, blank. It's so good. You got to listen to it or you got to read it. And that's how a fan base grows is a fan base expands your brand through word of mouth because people trust. Like if my brother or my best friend said, hey, check this out, I'm going to check it out because I have an emotional connection to them. But the problem is if you don't have a fan base, you can't just say, take this. You have to hope they take it. And that's a different way of marketing, right? Or, or in that case, advertising, right? The, the goal is how do I build a relationship with people so then they become interested in wanting what I have to offer? And with Dane Cook, he built friendships and relationships with the colleges, with R.R. Martin, he built relationships uh, uh, with his audience by working on already established projects that really elevated his name when it came to his, scre his screenwriting stuff for television. And Stephen King was piggybacking off of already established audiences within that. Now, those paths have very much changed nowadays. You could probably still get away with some of them, but uh, uh, the industry has changed. You know, social media has changed all that, right? But anyway, what I'm saying is word count is malleable the more flexibility you have, the more movement you have with your brand strength. And the more audience you have connected to that brand emotionally, the more uh, uh, control you have, the more uh, freedom you have to say yay or nay to the numbers you use and to who's willing to spend money on getting your stuff out. Brandon Sanderson can... Uh, get away from his publishers because he's going through Kickstarter because he has the audience fan base. 
Now, if I did Kickstarter or you did Kickstarter and we don't have the fan base he has, we could do a Kickstarter and it will not make millions of dollars because the audience isn't there. Product does not build audience. Brand, brand builds audience. And brand is not the thing you make. Brand is what you represent. It's your missions, morals, your purposes. So it's like what you're doing, why you're doing it. It's what you have to say. It's your personality. It's how you interact with people, etc. Anyway, all right. Let's keep this going. Okay, start with genre ex expectations. Let's do a walkthrough and figure out how do you how do you know what uh, what some of your word counts are. Right. So let's say you're writing a mystery novel. The industry standard is uh, typically seventy thousand to ninety thousand words. But if your story demands more or less, well, maybe it's okay to do that. Right. One popular mystery book that broke the mold was Gone Girl by uh, Gillian Flynn, which is uh, about one hundred forty five thousand words. Um, which is way over the standard for mysteries, but it worked because of the complexity of story structure, the pacing, uh, people really connected to it. There was an emotional bond about it, right? And a publisher was willing, or an agent uh, who was able to sell the book was uh, willing to push it because it had something different. It did something a little bit different, right? But the point here is that the genre gives you a guideline, but if your story naturally ex extends beyond that uh, without dragging, of course, uh, you can still find success. You know, that's the thing. Like your your wiggle room is is really is your book. Uh, I'll use Brandon Sanderson again. You know, Way of Kings is very long. All right. I don't mind it being long. But it wasn't his first book that got released. Right. It was one of the books he wrote within the 13 books that he wrote before he got signed. But. Way of Kings is really long. And it should be long because everything in there is purposeful, right? But they didn't want to take a chance on him at first. See, so he gave one of his his, his uh, shorter books. Um, but the point is his books are long because they everything in there is is purposeful. He has multiple characters, so that's gonna for example, if you had one character. You have a minimum of 27 chapters. Each chapter is 3,000 words. That's eight, that's 81,000 words, right? Now add one more character to that. Let's say they're a, a, a secondary character and they're half as long. Well, add another 40,000. So that's 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So now we're at 121,000 because we have two POVs. He has three and four sometimes. Same thing with R.R. Martin, right? And let's just say there's one main POV which is the 81,000 words. And then those three other POVs are maybe the first one's half, so it's 121,000. And then the uh, the next two it's combined are half. So that's a 180, it's almost 200,000 words. It builds up quick, right? So, But if those stories, those POVs are purposefully adding to the story and aren't just fada, fada, then uh, whatever. All right. Focus on story, not just word count. I would also recommend, especially in the beginning when you're working on your zero draft, your first draft, and your second draft, write your story, get it out. And, uh, but the number because the number one in priority is your story. It's not. It's not the word count. It's your story. Is the narrative making enough sense where the plot is clear and very specific, and the story is unfolding through the emotional experiences of your characters by them making choices, etc. Well, if your novel feels tight, engaging, and complete at 110,000 words when the standard is 90,000, you're probably going to be fine. It's only when the length distracts from the pacing or the core story that word count becomes a problem. Um, for example, Lice, uh, Lice, Of Mice and Men by John Steinbeck, 30,000 words, right? Compared to longer books like The Goldfinch by uh, Donna Tart. Right, it's three hundred thousand words. Both were published, right? So, uh, but both of these books tell their stories perfectly at very different lengths. So, while the business side of writing sets up expectations, your story's needs are what should ultimately guide you. And again, I know *Mice and Men* is is an older book, uh, and you know some books back in the day were were short. But the point is, if you if your story is meant to be 50,000 words, it's 50,000 words. As long as a full, complete, coherent plot with a compelling story of the characters, 
then it's worth it. Okay, but when uh, know when to stick to range. That being said, it's important to know when to stick within the word count range. If you're a, a debut author pitching your first novel to an agent, staying within the industry expectations uh, can make you more marketable. This is especially true in genres where stricter expectations like romance or YA fiction, uh, you know, where longer stories might be harder to sell. You know, ro long romance or YA fiction is harder to sell for an agent, right? So this is, you know, if you're a debut author, highly specific genre, or you're marketing driven, you might want to stay within um, the thing. But there's still always a little, little wiggle. All right. Uh, yeah. Here's a quick exercise to kind of like dictate if what you're doing is working for you. Um. So first you want to look at your current project and compare it to the industry standards of your genre, which I have a list I'm going to show in a second. Um, and you want to ask yourself certain questions. You know, is the pacing tight or does it drag? You're not the one who could really answer that because obviously, you know, we're the writers, we're biased. Um, if I were you, I would get someone to some ones, which during the beta reading, have them tell you if the pacing is tight or if it feels like it's dragging at any point. This is why you get strangers to read your book sometimes. You go, hey, read this. Let me know if it's dragging. Uh, because, you know, parents are going to be like, oh, baby, this is the best. <laughs> this is, you should be the top sell. You're going to be number one. Because they're parents. They love you. Person loves you. Uh, are there unnecessary scenes that could be cut? So this is something else you should be thinking of. Like, is this scene is this scene for you or is it for the narrative? Is it helping? Does the word count support the story's arc or is it just filler? If your story is tight and engaging, you have wiggle room to adjust the word count. But if you're going overboard just to meet or exceed the expected, uh, expected length, it's time to reconsider. It's, you don't want to force it, basically. Uh, you know, if you write a book that's 70,000 words and you're like, oh, industry standard for uh, this genre is 100,000 words. How do I get 30,000 30, back into it? I really wouldn't worry about that. Maybe that 70,000 is working if it's a tight, strong pace with uh, excellent characters and, and wonderful story representation or presentation. Then, then you might be uh, golden. But it might be the opposite. You might have a hundred thousand words, and the pacing is terrible. Uh, you know the characters. There's a lot of a lot of uh, extra filler, and you might have to cut it down to seventy thousand, and it, it works great. All right. Do you feel like your current project is fitting the word count expectations for your genre, or are you struggling with length? Let me know in the comments below, and uh, don't forget to subscribe for tips on the business of writing and uh, writing in general. Um, before we go into it, here you go. All right, so this is available for free in the folder. So literary fiction in general will range from 50 to 150,000. Uh, on average, 98,000, 58,000 in the low end, 163 is the high end. These numbers aren't necessarily uh, uh, always going to be the same, you know, because when I release this, you know, they could be changing at any time. That's how the world works. Uh, I also have notes that kind of explain some things like what the genre is or, you know, some other stuff. Uh, debut fiction should be around 80,000, right? Uh, this contemporary fiction, woman's fiction. So I have everything here. So it'll be word count range, right? So it's uh, uh, the, the minimum to the to the max. But then this is sort of like the average low end and higher end you might find. For example, um, let's see, like mystery might on the high end, uh, you know, 196. But on average, you know, it's 91,000 words. Um, where's the one? There was actually, uh, I can't find it. There's a, oh, here it is. Flash fiction. Yeah, this, this is, I was doing my research and this was interesting. One word, here's an example, alone. This single word invokes a powerful image of isolation and loneliness, uh, encapsulating a whole story in just one word, alone. Isn't that interesting? Anyway, um, so some of the, some of the, th I obviously have to add some stuff for new adult and everything, but I am always, I am always adding, I'm always updating every file that's in there at some point or another. But this gives you a pretty good example of all the ranges, the averages, the low and the high ends um, for young, middle grade, others. 
Uh, it also explains what some kind of books are, et cetera, et cetera. So I hope that definitely can help you. Uh, that, again, is free in the file uh, folder for the, the channel. Understanding, oh, final thoughts. Understanding book lengths is more than just hitting a word count. It's about finding the sweet spot between creative expression and market expectations. Remember that industry standards for book lengths are guidelines, not strict rules. They are not to be stressed over. They have malleability and wiggle room. They exist to provide a framework, not to limit your creativity. I'll always allow the story to come first since it's the most important aspect of the writing process. The quality of your story can take precedence over the standard word count. A well-crafted narrative uh, that engages readers and can often transcend typical lengths uh, is going to be the exception, right? So if you're writing uh, more to fit within genre consideration for marketing purposes, then take the word count into consideration. There is nothing wrong with fitting uh, a writing to fit within the genre or, you know, subgenre or whatever the case is. You know, romance novels are a specific length for a reason, you know? And of course, think about the business side of your writing journey. Longer books cost more to produce, which can affect a publisher's decision. Being aware of this can help you make informed decisions about your manuscript length. At the end of the day, though, if you're worried about book lengths getting signed to a publisher or trying to fit within a genre-specific number, it's okay to make choices to fit those needs. A debut author might not have the wiggle room an established author has with their publisher, but that doesn't mean a well-paced, engaging novel from a debut author can't push the limits or come in under the standard word count. It's a book by book situation. Brandon Sanderson wrote 13 books before he got published. Okay. So while understanding industry standards, it's important. It's uh, equally critical to trust your instincts as a storyteller. The right length for your book is the one that best serves your narrative and engages your readers. So basically, uh, as you continue, uh, you know, ultimately the goal is to create a book that resonates with the readers and stays with them long after you basically they've turned the last page and closed the book, you know. So whether that book is 50,000 words or 150,000 words, what matters most is the impact of your story. You know, for me, I have a book right now that I'm working on. It's probably going to be 250,000 words, maybe 300,000. Uh, it's an epic fantasy novel. It's the first book in a series. Uh, I don't care how long it is. I'm writing that book. I love that book. Uh, I am going to most likely self-publish that book. And that's the thing. Like, you know, I have the freedom to do that. I've created a life where, you know, I'm not, I'm not like, oh, I got to pay my bills with this thing, you know, because, right. So, uh, uh, that's also important to know. Like if you have the, if you're not stressing over paying your bills and writing a book is the only way you're going to pay your bills. Like you might have some wiggle room. You might be like, you know what? I'm just going to self publish this or whatever the case may be. Right. So again, it's a case by case basis. Next video in the series. Like what you saw. Oh, uh, self self publisher starting list where we will go over a checklist of crucial tasks that a self-publishing author needs to complete to successfully bring their book to market. So we, there we go. That's a nice little segue. Uh, it'll all be a nice checklist for self-publishers. Uh, if you like what you've uh, been listening to, uh, please hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you don't miss out. And uh, if you really like what you've, uh, if you found this information helpful, uh, give me a thumbs up. It helps the channel. Um, I guess that's it. That is it. I had a lot of fun today. All right, there you go. Uh, as always, peace and harmony, truth and action. Uh, keep developing the right mindset. I'll see you next time. Uh, bye.